question is where do we start? So we start before the crisis, I guess, in order to sort of set a, a background to the story and understand where we were and what the strong points of the economy were as we enter this really, really deep crisis and where the weaknesses are. The, uh, the situation just at the eve of the crisis looked actually overall pretty good. Um, we had a nice growth rate uh, of uh, 3.5%, something like this. Last year, um, we uh, had uh, a very low debt to GDP ratio of something like 60%. The banking sector is very, very stable. Um, the only sort of weak point that uh, in economically that uh, beset the Israeli economy for quite some time is the relatively high deficit of the government budget that uh, hovered around uh, debates about it. But let's take a round number at something like 4% at the beginning of 2020. So um, on top of it, and at the background, one has to, you know, one cannot ignore the political instability. We were consecutively uh, called to vote for a government and it came to nothing, right? And, and this crisis really sort of came to a uh, peak, just as this corona cr uh, crisis also erupted with, uh, you know, the uh, attempt to form a minority government and all, gov all government actions of parliamentary uh, oversight were blocked. So this, by way of a background, is very important to understand because it also limited the ability of, gov of the government to undertake cer certain actions uh, without the parliamentary approval. So as the crisis uh, set on, uh, immediately the first thing almost that happened was that the uh, um, Airports were closed, right? I mean, I mean, that bug in particular, right? So no, that the international traffic was shut down, and then gradually the economy was shut down, um, which means, of course, uh, and we were just discussing this. Uh, we, there was a short discussion of that before we started. Um, that right now there are about a million people who are out of jobs. So this is roughly speaking, 25% of the labor force. Um, which is right, which is really huge. And, and if you think about the short time uh, where it, when it happened, and that of course implies a very, very deep um, uh, sort of shutdown of the economy and therefore a very deep cut in GDP. So as the estimates are, I think, I mean, they are not even updated, but let's talk about the latest estimate that, were, that are already two weeks old, which means that they are ancient given the pace of events that the Bank of Israel has uh, sort of published. We are talking right now about a decline already of, of roughly speaking 7% of GDP. And every additional uh, month of closure is they estimated to be uh, e equivalent to something, something like uh, additional 3%. So, right, so, so we are talking about serious stuff, as one can say. Um, so I think this by way of a very broad uh, description at this stage, I would stop unless, of course, uh, you, you know, there is interest going deeper into the details. Because I'm speaking German, uh, I follow very closely in particular what happens in Germany. And actually, it's quite interesting to compare. So essentially, Germany did things that uh, very, are very similar to what Israel did, maybe a little bit less severe in, in the, in the uh, social distancing rules. But let's ignore the details. So they are also shutting down the economy, I mean, per force. And one thing that is very different from the, point, from the point of view of managing this massive unemployment that is being generated is the very, very uh, peculiar German system of, that was also very extremely useful in the 2008 crisis of, of, of having people uh, maintain their employment relationship even when they are laid off. They are, con they are continuously paid by their by their employer, 
So they are not registered as unemployed. The entire accounting, the government is supporting, of course, the employers, right? This is a very elaborate uh, program. The entire administrative uh, uh, treatment, therefore, goes from the employer to the government and not from individuals to the government. So individuals don't have to, to fill out any forms, anything. And this runs extremely smoothly. Again, doesn't break up employment relationships. And when the economy gets back to normal, these people are called back to their jobs immediately. And this is also why Germany's recovery from the 2008 crisis was extremely fast. So this is, of course, I mean, there are millions of uh, detail points that go into that. Uh, Let's talk, first of all, about the short-run measures that have been taken. Um, it, it's essentially, the government has now introduced a, a program that is roughly, that is claimed to be, roughly speaking, 6% of GDP. So compared to, let's say, the, the US right, program is, roughly speaking, 10% of GDP. In Germany, it is, roughly speaking, 15% of GDP, right? Huge program. So, so from that point of view, the Israel program is, is smaller than these uh, other countries. It is basically, uh, sep like all other programs, by the way, has two parts. One is really cash transfers to, to, uh, to households and to, to the business sector. Roughly speaking, again, half of it. And the other half are um, loan guarantees, postponement of uh, obligatory payments, uh, like, like local taxes, electricity bills, and, and the like. So these are just postponing, not, not annulling these payments. Um, this is what is going on right now. The administration of it seems to be extremely difficult. Um, there is a, little, a lot of noise around this thing. A lot of you know, things are not clear. People don't know exactly what they're entitled to, how they're going to claim it, when they're going to get the money. Uh, so this, this uh, you know, uh, whether uh, <laughs> I give very high marks to the, uh, to the, to the medical part, uh, maybe I do, but certainly not to this part of, of handling this crisis. Then the question is what will happen the day the economy will start getting back to work. Um, so, so there are also got as part of this, these uh, uh, 80 uh, billion shekels, that, so this, these 6% of GDP that have been allocated are also allocated to government programs um, like infrastructure, investment in infrastructure that need to be done anyhow. So this is perfectly okay, right? So if the government rides on this crisis in order to do things that it should have done actually a long time ago, this is a good opportunity and I am certainly in favor of it. Um, likewise, of course, the huge investments now in the medical system are going to replenish all kinds of deficiencies. Of course, Bailey it is, it is, it is geared towards dealing with this corona crisis, but there are also let's call them side benefits from this point of view. That is also perfectly okay. So uh, as a macroeconomist, I, I don't think they want to go and they don't, there's, there is a, a real damage here, right? Which cannot be uh, uh, recaptured by any government program. So if a field burns down, there is no amount of money that will, will, will cause the corn to grow again. And this, some of it is this nature. Um, However, and there are macro measures that, that need to be taken, and of course, uh, there is a huge question of how to finance the government deficit. So the deficit is going to grow at least by 10, an additional 10%. So that means we are starting from, from four, so we're going to very easily reach 15, uh, and maybe more. So as we, we were talking about it before, right, the debt to GDP ratio at the onset was 60%, which is low, and in, increasing it to 70, 75%, I don't think is, is a problem from the point of view of the Israeli economy. Uh, government <laughs> simply needs to, to borrow. And it has started borrowing, in particular, it went to the international capital market. This was one thing that I tried to sort of uh, recommend uh, inofficially 
Not that I know that it was my recommendation that was adopted, but I was happy that this was indeed going on. That, that the international capital market is being used and it, that we are sort of uh, uh, now benefit from the, from the good standing that we have accumulated with, with um, very, very, very responsible monetary policy and not so responsible, but still quite reasonable uh, fiscal policy. So we, are, we now have a dividend of that. And one danger is, is, of course, to throw the dividend away. This is something that needs to be avoided. And the government has to make very clear that it is trying to come back to, you know, to the path of, of, uh, of uh, uh, balanced budget in the long run, of course, and reducing the debt to, to, to GDP ratio um, in order to, to maintain its credibility in the international capital markets. Otherwise, we are going to pay a very, very high price for it. Let me raise two of them. One of them, very selfishly, uh, there is, you know, everyone is talking about little by little releasing the economy, but of course, people of my age, uh, we are supposed to be protected by this closure, right? In some sense, everything is done in order to protect us. Sometimes people speak in this, use this kind of language. Um, so, right, so I have not heard yet anyone who says, okay, these older people, they also need, they have their own needs. It's true that they don't uh, contribute to the uh, economic activity, but right, I mean, there are social con uh, connections uh, with their families, with their grandchildren, and of course, vice versa, that right, right now are, per are strictly prohibited. And nobody is talking about, okay, how do we do this? I mean, how, how, given the fact that we need to protect these people, and given the fact that nobody is talking about eradicating this virus, uh, you know, what measures are going to be taken? I, and I'm going to immediately suggest an answer. But this is not discussed. Number two, this is internationally not discussed. How is it going to work uh, across, across borders, right? So how will countries be willing to, to admit citizens of other countries uh, fearing that they are going to import, re-import the, the, uh, the virus with them. Again, all of this before a vaccine has been introduced, which will not happen within the next year or so, uh, most likely. So I don't hear an international discussion about this issue. And, uh, and again, the, the solution to both of these is actually already at hand. And the surprising thing is that at least in Israel, nobody discusses it in all these lines. So if you think about what happens in, the, in most Asian countries, right? I mean, in particular, South Korea, which has managed to control this, this uh, out, outburst very quickly and very effectively, but also other uh, Eastern Asian countries. China is, of course, an extreme example. So they use uh, tracking in, in a very, very efficient way. And they use also, uh, you know, make information about the situation at which an individual is medically public. In particular, the Chinese do that. So you carry around a, a smartphone, and on your smartphone, you have you have an app, and this app has, you know, shows three colors. If you are green, you are free to go. And everyone can see this. And if you're not green, right, if you're yellow, you need to go to, to, uh, to you know, separate yourself for a week or something like this. And if you're red, you're simply, you know, basically ill. Even the Germans are talking about not quite at such an extreme uh, uh, measure, but they are talking about, about an app that will inform people whether they have or not been in touch with, you know, in a close touch, not like uh, the one, the situation that is, that is here where the, where the uh, uh, source of the information are cell phone antennas. These are talking about 100 meters um, distance. The Germans are talking about Bluetooth-based uh, technology, which will identify people who are really have been close by and for a while. 
and this will be an, uh, enable people to really track with whom they have been in touch and if the person who, with whom they have been in touch is, is uh, infected or not. Uh, and of course, they talk about doing that on a voluntary basis, but you can imagine what will happen. So, you know, people who go out and go to a cafe or whatever will ask to show their, their, uh, their app. If they don't have the app, they're not going to be admitted. So, so, so sooner than later, everyone will have this app. And then you have some public control about who is infected and who is not. Those who are infected need to be, of course, uh, enclosed. Those who are not will be, you know, happy to, to roam around, do their, their business. And this will also resolve the issue of letting the older people out. And this will resolve the issue of having international um, uh, transport going again. I don't think that we have ever experienced uh, such a, a crisis, definitely not in the uh, level of magnitude and not in, uh, in the uncertainty that uh, goes around it. I mean, nobody knows when uh, this uh, uh, crisis will end, what will be the consequences. And I think that in that uh, uh, respect, I mean, we are, are now ex uh, experiencing something that we didn't have uh, uh, before. Um, at my time, we had to uh, uh, to deal with uh, a crisis of uh, the terror that uh, happened in 2003 in the streets of uh, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv and elsewhere in the, in the country. But uh, uh, more uh, efficiently, we did with the with the, with that with the uh, crisis after the Second Lebanon War in 2006, and that I will come to that. Uh, in, uh, in the next step when we're talking about what the government can do now. Just to add to, Benny, uh, to what Benny said, I agree with everything that he said uh, in terms of, uh, of, uh, of the numbers. Uh, we entered as a very strong economy and uh, now we are uh, in, in some numbers that are frightening. But what I would like to, to, to give you a little bit of, of a flavor of what's going on here and I will say that on the medical aspect, we get the impression that it's managed okay, pretty good. And that's because, I mean, we have a good healthcare system and because we have here solidarity among the people and, you know, the health ministry created the panic here. So people, even the uh, people in Israel that's not usually are very disciplined, I mean, stay home just because they're afraid. Uh, the... Uh, I am concerned more about the economic and social consequences of what is happening now. And uh, I don't remember, even in my 65 years uh, in Israel, I was born here, that we had uh, such a level of uh, unemployment. And as I spoke at the beginning, before everybody joined, uh, I think that the unemployment is with the young people is with people that don't have other uh, sources of income and dealing with people that uh, don't have enough money for food, not to talk about rent and other things, is not an easy task. To, to make things clear, I mean, we were in 2003 in a debt to equity ratio of close to 100. And since then, because of a uh, very consistent policy, we went down to 60%. By the same time, most of the Western countries went up. Uh, just by comparison, I think that the United States, it's more than 100% these days. So our standing is indeed very, very strong in the markets. Uh, I think that it will not be incorrect to say that we can borrow today in the international markets uh, uh, basically almost like the United States, if not uh, uh, at the same terms. So uh, um, um, I think that over the uh, past 15 years with all the problems that we had here, the fiscal policy has been uh, uh, very consistent, very good. And, and now it, indeed we get the dividend uh, uh, of, of that. Uh, the second thing that you ask about, I think that, again, uh, uh, Ben is uh, uh, related to that. I think that any plan 
has to be clear and simple. What we know about what the Bank of Israel has done until now um, was to, to sort of signal to the markets that it is going to support the, uh, government bonds. So this is a little bit similar, of course, to what the ECB is doing and what the Fed is doing. Um, it, it has not, it, let's put it this way, it has been a little bit that on the sidelines, I think, very cautious uh, at this stage in really stating anything, I think the fear is, is that if they do, they will spark a panic. Right now, there is no panic in the financial markets. They did say that they are perfectly in control of what the banks are doing, uh, and, and they sort of uh, um, reassured the, uh, the public that the banks are sound. And I think at this stage, right, that, that this, this is fine. So they, are, they have signaled, as I say, the willingness to, to intervene in the, in the government in the secondary market, which is also okay because the government is about to borrow a, a lot. Um, and other than that, they are, as I say, <laughs> at the sidelines. However, I know for a fact that there is that the that the Bank of Israel, right, and the govern, governor Amir Yaron, is all the time in touch with the Treasury for sure, also with the Prime Minister. Whether you know to what extent these uh, these consultations with the Prime Minister are or not successful, I prefer not to comment on that. I would just add to that uh, a few comments. I'll start from the uh, the last one. I mean, I think that the I think that I and I know that the governor of the Bank of Israel is quite uh, uh, involved, participates in all the meetings about the uh, financial steps that have uh, to be taken. Um, keep in mind that there is a lot of sensitivity here. Uh, in the relationship between the ministry that is in charge of uh, fiscal policy and they don't want the Bank of Israel uh, uh, to, uh, to intervene in what they're doing. So he is more consultant, but uh, uh, definitely I think that he has also the, e the ears of uh, the prime minister. Um, I just wanted to say that the Bank of Israel is not allowed by law to print money. So all the measures that they're trying to take is without printing money. Um, in my view, they are doing a thing in the right way. They don't create panic, but they uh, uh, send uh, kind of messages that uh, they're going to support the financial system. There is regulations uh, for the banks on, uh, on uh, um, on equity that they have to uh, have uh, and other things so as to let them uh, uh, lend more money. I think that they have to be a bit more uh, um, decisive in terms of uh, getting the, uh, the banks to do, uh, uh, to implement the plans that the government is, is uh, uh, or came up with in in uh, in a faster in a quicker way, I mean, being like uh, execution agents of the government. Okay, so there are going to be shifts in relative prices for sure, right? There are going to be shortages uh, in. <laughs> All kinds of, I don't know, right? I mean, uh, the, uh, the uh, supply chain has been cut in, in a serious way. So we don't know how this will manifest itself in the final analysis, but it is to be expected that there will be price hikes. However, on the other hand, we see, of course, oil prices going down. So there's going to be, again, a uh, price shocks that will work themselves through the system. This is not what we mean by inflation, obviously. So the question is whether there's going to be a, some kind of a, a, a long run, uh, persistent change in the price level. At this stage, I don't think this is the case. 
because again, the lessons from 2008 is, is, is very prominent. So central banks are expanding the balance uh, sheet tremendously, but basically by setting up assets from the private sector. So both government assets, true enough, but again, from the secondary market and private assets. There are all kinds of, um, um, again, theoretical reasons which seem to be work, be verified by the experience of 2008 that these, these kinds of actions, right, of uh, in, increasing liquidity in the economy against this type of an exchange, which is not like printing new money, is not inflationary, and it has not been inflationary. And until now, this is what central banks, right, again, the big ones, the Fed and the ECB, and also the Bank of Israel, right, just as Yossi has just mentioned, um, are going to follow. There have been some voices, and, I, and until now, they have not been taken seriously, luckily, falling up upon the Bank of Israel, for example, to print money. I, I am fairly sure that this will not happen. Not, I guess, it will not happen. In New York. No, I mean, there is no way around it. Again, there is a, there is a loss of, of output, right? So there is stuff that, that would have been available, which is not. So clearly, government consumption will have to go down. And the question is, um, in what form? So there's, number one, this is a good opportunity to, um, to pass all kinds of and clean up the tax system and, and, uh, and abolish some of the great uh, distortions in it, whether there is, will be enough po um, political power to do that, this is a question. But I remind you of, of Netanyahu as, as the Minister of Finance in 2003, who did a lot of, of, of this kind of measures, and, and uh, that had a great impact on the economy at the time. Number two, there for sure will be reductions in uh, wages in the public sector because the private sector will, it will also have to reduce um, uh, labor costs. So, so that will take place. And with that, probably also the municipalities will have to reduce services. It's a big, big crisis on small and medium uh, enterprises here. What uh, uh, I can say is that, uh, again, without getting into the details, I mean, the law is such that they are not even entitled to unemployment allowances. So now the government came up with uh, uh, some uh, measures of, of giving them some money um, talking about something that can be implemented so quickly, I mean, uh, I suggested at the time, just to look back and to see how much taxes they paid in, I don't know, in, in over a period of time, and simply whoever paid taxes just paid, I mean, the government, should it pay it back? It's very simply done. I mean, the, the tax authorities are very good in execution, and... Uh, I hope, I mean, there will be a big outcry of this, uh, of, uh, this uh, uh, industry or this segment of business. I hope that the government will uh, 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 step in and help them because it's very important for our economy. What, what is done elsewhere in the world, um, these small businesses, again, they are, they are getting direct grants, but usually very small, right? So, so, so here too, what, the amounts that uh, are being discussed right now are really, from that, from that point of view, almost ridiculous. Um, right. The other thing and the other measure that is being taken is to help them um, get loans, cheap loans. But even that has not implemented in the correct way in Israel because they have to, I mean, again, we are talking about, about basically unincorporated uh, people they have to mortgage their, their own property in order to get this loan. So now you imagine that, uh, you know, you are a small business person and you, say, you face this huge uncertainty whether your bar or whatever, in a barber shop or something, will it all be uh, in functioning again within the foreseeable future? 
you go to the bank and the bank says, fine, I'll give you a loan, but uh, you know, the government is guarantees something like 80% of it, this is true enough, but what about the rest, you know, the 20% mortgage your home? So of course, most people don't, 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 um, um, don't go for that. And this program that has been set on very early on, I think something like 8 billion shekel have been uh, allocated to it, basically is unused. Thank you.